What's going on, YouTube, man? Back with another reaction video. We're about to do a reaction to News to Astonish Top 5 DLC Ideas for Marvel Spider-Man 2. And I got Jay Fridgey in the building. He's going to do this reaction with me. He's been with me for a hot minute for the past three hours reacting to videos. So, yeah, we're about to do another one to the Top 5 DLCs. So, um... Who would you who would you like to see in a DLC and uh in the uh, Spider-Man 2 game? Just anyone really. DLC. Uh, so outside of the main story of villains, I would like to see a DLC. Wait, hold on one second. Um, your mic is kind of uh skipping a little bit. That better? Yep, way better, bro. Yep. Okay, yeah, I I did some dial stuff. I should have just left it alone. Whatever, y'all. Subscribe it's to this good, man's though. channel because I make mistakes, and uh, you know, hit the like button and boost him to counteract the dragging down that I'm doing right this minute. You just need to go <laughs> ahead and just do it right now. Just click it. It don't cost you a thing, man. And it's comment if you button. think I'm just ridiculous. <laughs> no, but a DLC thing that I would love to see, I think, is maybe a DLC expansion on whatever it is that Taskmaster was doing. Because if you remember the Taskmaster side missions in the first Spider-Man game, he was very much on some like, you know, I'm evaluating you. There's someone who wants to hire you. And... I, I there, there are a lot of little side quest things that uh, I feel like they should move away from them being side quest and just maybe expand them to their own DLC, like the Taskmaster arc, maybe um, fighting uh, Wraith as well. I think um, whatever's happening Is with Yuri, Yuri? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, her yeah. becoming Wraith. Your, yeah, I think that that should be its own DLC as well. That way it can yeah, be it's more fully emotional. focused on, like, Focus. these two people who are friends. Yeah. I'm a, uh, How about you? I'm going to say I definitely agree with Wraith and a Taskmaster thing. But I, was, I wasn't even thinking about them, to be honest. I was actually thinking about uh, probably the Lizard. Pride of Lizard, to be honest, since Con Dr. Connors is in it, I feel like uh, by like the end of the storyline, Con Dr. Connors, you know, take the serum or something like that. Then you have the DLC, whereas though, okay, this is focused on the Lizard, and you know, you fight Lizard, all that kind of stuff like that. And maybe you get different uh, areas to explore. Maybe the sewers, like in Spider Man uh, 3 d game, whereas though you had to go into the sewers. So maybe they do something like that would be dope too. So the lizard uh, was one of them I would like to see, and um, I'm gonna say a hero. I'm gonna say Daredevil, obviously, but I'm not gonna explain why because it's it's freaking obvious why people want to see Daredevil. But yeah, I I would like him to see. I would like to see Daredevil with the uh kind of go with like the kingpin kind of thing, and they kind of like work together him and Spider Man. But that's it. I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> I just want them to work together on like a kingpin case, really. But um, yeah. Another person I'll probably like to see. Um, it's probably Sandman. Cause we haven't seen him, and he's not with the big six in this uh, universe, Sandman. So yeah, I think it would be cool to see him, see what like what he's doing. Yeah, that would be fine, for sure. Yeah, so I think all those would be really cool. I didn't think about, um, I didn't even think or consider another hero DLC, which, I mean, it makes perfect sense. We did one with Silver Sable where we have an ally. Mm -hmm. uh, so Daredevil as DLC would be phenomenal. Like, that way they don't even have to worry about including it in the main story. You exactly. add it on after the fact, man. Yeah. But uh, we about to like get in this reaction, man. Let's see what uh, News to Astonish is talking about here. See what he got going on for the uh, his top five DLC. See if he said anything that we mentioned. Right, let's get it cracking. 
Ah. Yeah. There you go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to New Show Science, where we discuss comics, movies, games, and more, and to another spectacular Marvel Spider-Man 2 video. My name is Ronnie, and today we're going to be discussing my top five DLC picks for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Honestly, this is probably going to be the most difficult top five video I've ever made, and I figured I'd keep it top five only because DLCs are usually short, and honestly, I couldn't come up with the top ten reasonable DLC ideas for the sequel and let me know if you all can come up with at least top 10 dlc ideas from marvel spider-man 2 Rem remember this is just my opinion if you agree or disagree with my top five dlc story ideas it's funny how you always gotta say that i'd like to get a conversation going it's uh, really yeah to with you all in the comment section it, it will be freaking like, out bruh subscribe man, and, and click on that gun, this, gun, gun for his head going gun for his head <laughs> you should have said this I'm only about 300 subscribers away from 4K. Nice. It really helps out the channel and means Shout a lot out to the guy. With all of that being said, let's get started with number five. Morbius, the living vampire. Oh! Guy. In Marvel Spider-Man, we're introduced to Morgan Michaels, who is a Yo! Marvel Spider-Man. He's... I forgot! I did too! And it's funny because when I was playing the game, Michael Morbius, I didn't think about the vampire at all. I never thought about him. Like, as the vampire, Michael Morbius. Wow. Yeah, not one time did I even consider yeah, the fact that, that he was the vampire. He was the scientist. He was the scientist. That's crazy. And I knew who Michael Morbius was. Yeah, but when I he showed up in the game, I thought about it. But, like, thinking, like, now that we've had that game and then Miles Morales come out, I wow. didn't even consider for this game. Dang, that would be lit. He'll probably look scary too. Let's imagine playing and what if he's like affecting people, like turning people into vampires, all that kind of stuff, and just fighting them. That that would bring a whole new gameplay mechanics. Remember we was talking about earlier, like on the wall, ball like fighting. yes, oh, <laughs> we were just talking about that. Like that would bring a whole new fighting mechanic, where like you can fight on the wall, where you fighting the vampires. Wow, yeah. you have enemies. Wow. Yeah. Dang. See, we did everybody Dang. on the same page with it. Because we, we were <laughs> trying to think of villains where it would have made sense. And Morbius would wow. be a villain that could create other enemies that you would have to fight on walls or in the air and stuff. That you would be said this. that would be lit. Oh my god, bro. One of the yes. who helped develop the GR twenty seven or Devil's Breath as its nickname in the game. In the game, little is known about Morgan Michaels. According to a file found in Osborne's apartment, Michaels has been the Osborne family doctor for decades, as he was responsible for prescribing experimental treatments for Emily Osborne back in 1997. As some of you in the comment section for my top 10 villains we need in Marvel's Oh, Blade would be nice. I didn't think about Blade for yeah, a team Yeah, I didn't. Ooh, we. Yeah, if he show up, if they do do a Morbius DLC, then Blade show up, another hero showing up. Boy, that would be yes, brand. That would be beautiful, bro. Like, and they treat him like uh, I wanted to like say it was like a fight scene where though you you fighting with him with the vampires and they treated how they did uh, when Miles and Prowler were fighting Rock Song when Spider Man and Silver Sable yeah. was fighting like uh, you know um. Hammerhead goons, they fighting beside you. Then when you do certain takedowns, you know, they'll come in with you to do that takedown stuff like that. That would be dope, man. If they do uh, add bleed. Yeah, like a team. Team takedown. Team takedown yeah. with Spider Man and Blade. Yes, bro. That would be fire. I wonder if I wonder how it would go. Cause Blade would be wanting to kill people. Yeah, he would want to kill them, but like I don't know how. It'll probably like be on some stunning type stuff, like using his guns, something like that, to like stun him, to neutralize yeah. him, something like that. Not much killing, but I know Blade is really gonna want to kill him. I'm pretty sure, like Spider Man would probably convince him, like, "Yo, there's a way to like save them all. Like, I have this cure or whatever to like, you know, fix them. All you gotta do is trank them, 
and you know they fight him then he yeah take him here and there it'll be dope for sure to already know morgan michaels is an alias for michael morbius the living vampire in the comics morbius's first appearance was in amazing spider-man number 101 can you imagine a dlc where you're tracking down morbius by simply finding bodies lying about and creating a path to morbius location that would be dark but it's definitely suited as dlc material spider-man notes that michaels looks unhealthy appearing pale thin and having dark circles in his eyes could this possibly lead to morgan michaels becoming the living vampire we all know number four craven the hunter dlc i know a few yeah. people already suggested yep. craven the hunter in my top 10 villains yeah we mentioned this in marvel spider-man 2 video even some of you suggested he should be in a dlc this is starting to sound like it's funny somebody said taskmaster too and you just said that yeah yeah i was gonna say do you think that like some of these people would does it suit them to be dlc or should they just be a side mission i feel like if they're a new villain i wonder like should they really i don't know should they should they like a new they should villain? at least be introduced in the game first before you give them a dlc i guess taskmaster i think he uh for sure i think he do kind of uh, need a dlc because like yeah. there's a whole he's been introduced yeah, he's been introduced, and there's that whole thing, like you said earlier, that I completely forgot, where the, he was uh, working with for someone, I think, in the first game, where the, okay, somebody sent him to watch Spider-Man for something. So maybe they kind of, like, expand who was actually watching him in the DLC, which is worth, uh, you know, playing through to figure out who the heck was uh, Taskmaster talking about. So that's worth, you know, going through. Then, yeah. during the gameplay, not the gameplay, um... The storyline in like Spider Man PS five, whereas the um you remember how in PS four they had black cat po poses like everywhere, he took pictures, stuff like that. Well if he kinda had something like yeah. that for Craven, whereas though okay, Craven got these little things, you know, placed out here and there for you to kinda test you know, to try and test you really, then he gets on DLC to, to you know you know, trying to see like if you're the proper, if you're a worthy creature to be captured, or something like that, you know, the Craven's Hunt and whatever, something like that, yeah. which would be dope. So, um, yeah, that that Craven thing could be introduced like that. Then, um, I think when I when I said earlier about Doctor Connors, you could kind of like, uh, you know, like I said, we uh, he took the serum at the end, then kind of be expanded at the end of the uh, DLC in the DLC, something like that. Yeah. Or I'm here yeah. for it. Craven can be trying to uh, take down Kurt, <laughs> like the lizard. He could be trying to take him down. True. He could, yeah. He, he, is, could a, he is a a creature. So they could a, a creature uh, ex of of exotic taste, I guess would be the term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, so that like Craven would use. That makes sense. I mean, it works. Top five villains that should appear in Marvel's Spider-Man yeah. But hear me out. Craven can lay out traps in the DLC, kind of like how Taskmaster did the first Marvel Spider-Man game, but we never really spent so much time with Taskmaster, which left a bit to be desired, but having Craven as a DLC character... I just gonna let him drop you like, oh, I remember he was taking your moves too, bro. Traps he lays out in the open big mm -hmm. you copied your moves. Yeah. For DLC. Let me know in the comment section below. We obviously don't need to go into how Taskmaster was underutilized in the MCU. Oh, man. I got a whole podcast... Well, I was a part of a podcast with uh, the Kai cast. He, uh, he, me and him was talking about the Black Widow movie overall. And um, I do not like how the MCU handled Taskmaster. I'll keep it like that. i keep it short and sweet. I've talked about it with other people. They could have just made that a generic villain. They didn't have to put the moniker of Taskmaster for that, in, in my personal opinion. You could have just said that that was his body guard. And then he didn't to like it. He, and it's and it's nothing to do with Taskmaster being who they were. Um, for to not give away anything for anyone watching who hasn't seen it. If you haven't, and you're a big MCU fan, I don't know what you're doing. But just the biggest thing was like the way that they utilized Taskmaster's thing of copying people's fighting styles unlike 
in this game where he like learns on spot. It, yeah, on the spot. They they underutilized his character and you could have just made that character just a generic bodyguard. Yeah. You didn't have to give them the name reveal, Taskmaster. Like secret. It may, it'll make him even more mysterious if it's just like is it the bodyguard who just copy your moves on the spot and nobody knows who he is especially if you come into the mcu or marvel in, in general and you don't know who he is like me and you we know who taskmaster is say with some person who has no idea who he is and they you know see him for the first time and he's copying all this person's moves on spot and nobody knows who he is there's no reveal at the end or nothing, just a bodyguard. Like, nobody knows who he is, but later on, he'll get expanded on. Yeah. Number three, Spider Island DLC. This one might be a bit of a stretch, and to allow the main story to flow properly and not be distracted by something so elaborate as the story of Spider Island, it should totally be saved for a possible DLC. Not as familiar with this. Is a limited series what do you say? Shot that ran back in 2011. The main uh spider island spider it's some island. type of like it's some type of like storyline that was pretty short i've never heard that before he hasn't really explained it yeah i've never heard of it either let's let's hear what he's got to say plot of that story involves the citizens of manhattan island mysteriously manifesting powers very similar to spider-man this story received really positive reviews views and i think it'd be a fun way for insomnia to play around with the idea of spider-man one-shot stories kind of like how marvel comics and marvel studios does that's Something fine like spider island should be a dlc on its own because of how detailed the story is and the amount of supporting characters it contains unless insomnia games wants to give it its own spin spider island is a perfect contender for dlc okay i don't have too much uh too much of a comment for that to be honest i like it doesn't sound like a bad idea. I just don't know too much about it. Yeah. So I can't comment on it. Yeah, the only thing that I could gather, and I guess he called it a one-shot story, is in like, I don't know. Does that mean it's not canon? Like, yeah, you just have just a like DLC a... where it happens, but but it it doesn't actually matter, and it's not referenced later. Yeah, um, that's the, that's the only thing. Mean. Yeah, the only thing I can see that mattering for is like if some bad people started manifesting spider-man powers and you got to go fight them and then like maybe you have a few good ones and you work with them but then at that point like we already got two spider-man in one game like yeah i don't know yeah yeah okay my dog dog's laying back there like she did number two how about a dlc involving both spider-man and spider-man miles morales now i wouldn't really see it if they make the not having both in the main story a plot point yeah but it'd be a cool idea to have a dlc that requires both spider-man to complete maybe have a patrol dlc help the citizens of new york more often solve some crime i don't know something like that along the lines something involving both spider-man and a dlc would be an amazing idea do you all think a dlc featuring both spider-man is a good idea perhaps assuming that the venom symbiote was manifested and we fought the symbiote already post game and the DLC involves the symbiote with both Spider-Man and Miles Morales Spider-Man, maybe we can see perhaps Miles Morales take on the symbiote and have him have his own black suit. So, something like that. And that? Hmm. Miles had his own symbiote. I think he did have his own symbiote at one point in a comic, but I don't think it was the Ven Venom symbiote. I think it was like a Carnage one. So, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, maybe that's what they could do to play around with the idea of co-op without fully doing it in the game is to only have a DLC. Um, they could do that that yeah, way they can cool experiment too. with it. Yeah, because like, I, I think one of the biggest things with video game franchises like this is people people get worried when they try to do too much, too much new and overhauling and changing the, the core gameplay mechanics. And that's what I've seen a couple people say they worry about is like, oh, if it goes co-op, like then they're going to be focused on like the co-op aspects and not like focused as much on the story like they have been. Mm -hmm. So maybe, yeah, a co-op deal would be would be the move to have the best of both worlds. Yeah. It would be an amazing idea for a DLC, a very short story post game, assuming the symbiote is the main plot of the sequel. So it's probably going to be looking to be that way anyways. 
and judging from the fact that Miles Morales is returning for the sequel, I think he might be more involved in the sequel's DLC. You let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see involving those two Spider-Men. Number one, introduce the Beetle. So I just had the craziest Beetle. idea. It took me quite a bit some time to think about this one, only because the Beetle has had different people wear the armor throughout the years. Instead of having Abner Jenkins to appear as the Beetle, why not have Janice Lincoln's Beetle appear in the DLC? Mm. The Beetle can play a big part of the DLC by having her show up to hunt down Spider-Man. For those of you who aren't familiar with this version of the Beetle, Janice Lincoln is the daughter of the notorious crime boss Lonnie Lincoln, a.k.a. Oh. Tombstone. We all had our chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tombstone in the first Marvel Spider-Man game. Wow. But introducing his daughter would be icing on the cake, wouldn't you agree? Like Tombstone, Janice Lincoln as a child looked up to her father and his criminal ways and always wanted to follow her father in his footsteps, but was denied to take part in them. As an adult, she became a very successful defense attorney. So, a good storyline involving Janice Lincoln's Beetle would be Spider-Man trying to convince Janice that the path she wants to live by is the wrong path. Beetle is a firm believer in her father and his ways, and she's too stubborn to listen to Spider-Man. I think adding a very underrated villain such as the Beetle would be an excellent choice, and she's the perfect character for the sequel's DLC. And those are my top five DLC picks for Marvel's Spider-Man wow. 2. The way he Yo, explained it was dope. I... The way he explained that was oh, dope. Go ahead. The way he explained that was dope. Like I wasn't thinking about I didn't like what he just said about the Beetle, it put me it gave me like a different perspective about the possibility, like, oh shoot, like yeah. this actually could work. Yeah, my my mouth was but I went on mute because dog weird. But yeah, I I didn't know that there was a rendition that was related to Lonnie yeah. Lincoln, especially because we've yeah. already had a side mission that focused solely on Tombstone and Tombstone is is grown at this point. I think my introduction to Tombstone was actually the same thing we talked about previously, the Daredevil versus Spider-Man like little arc in the old cartoon. Um, Cause that's like, you see Lonnie Lincoln when he's like a, a younger, younger person. Um, so this Tombstone, Tombstone, oh, yeah, you know, is a grown man. Yeah, yeah. He's at this point a crime boss. I remember, yeah. He's been creating more people like him. Yeah. And so uh, to then bring in like his daughter and then like, I don't know, maybe his daughter breaks him out of prison and then you got both of them to deal with. That would be kind of lit, man. And it would it would go with Insomniac's thing of like of like really breaking down to the core of characters and like knowing like more about them as a person and behind the scenes like you would get a look at tombstone as like yeah. a father now not just some crime boss you know random crime boss yeah yeah um i honestly did not think he had a daughter like i don't never thought tombstone has a daughter <laughs> but yeah that's yeah that'd be yeah. dope for sure um i've never seen used at an older age before so not like this that's old. why i was unaware as well yeah he, he's at least 40 or over i, I think he seems like he's like old like middle-aged type old so it would make sense for him to have a daughter it just yeah all the innovations that we saw of this character we never thought of him you know having one or never even seen him get close to anyone to even have one he, like it was all about you know business whatever yeah, exactly so yeah, that's that's totally different. Um, so he said, Taxmaster, Morbius, Beetle, Spider Island, and uh, he said like a symbiote Miles. Craven. Oh, he said Craven, Craven, Craven. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, he yeah. Said, really, um, the Taskmaster was kind of lumped in with Craven, but his his one was Craven, and then in the symbiote co-op. Okay. So okay, cool. So like Miles um, co-op with Symbiote. I can see that, but I don't want that to be honest. I still stand with the whole uh, lizard thing, in my opinion. I honestly, I still stand behind the lizard thing because since we've been introduced to the character, the lizard, I want to see more of him in like a DLC if they don't already expand it in like side missions something like that already. Yeah. Uh same here in that if they want to do like full-on co-op like you can swap between miles and peter 
maybe save that for a DLC if y'all feel like you can't focus on the story correctly. Yeah. At the very least, I could see the main story doing what we've already seen, which was you you alluded to with when you were Prowler and Miles, or you were Tinkerer and Miles, or you had the team takedowns, or you were Black Cat and Peter. You could probably keep it that way for the main story. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you want to get to where we can swap between them like Arkham style, that would be cool too. But if it can't go that far, whatever. Not sure I feel about the whole Spider Island thing. It doesn't seem seem like it could go very far but maybe i need to look and do more research into yeah. what happened in that one shot story as he said i'm with you where um because also it would involve some other some new map rendering uh i could get down with a lizard and like you got to go down in the sewers because you know you like explored around like pipelines and stuff in the mm-hmm. first game but yeah to actually go down in the sewers you would obviously need like maybe an expansion that has like a couple of levels built since you wouldn't be able to go in and out the sewers all the time. So that that would be a good opportunity for them to go more into into Kurt Connors. Um, and he mentioned Craven and within Craven mentioned Taskmaster, which which we talked about. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I feel that some of these are really good ideas. I really like his number one with introducing the version of the beetle that is um lonnie lincoln's daughter yeah I that would like be that, too, that, that would just really kind of bring different. some stuff full circle yeah. like tug at peter's heartstrings you know mm-hmm. like i have to save her like she didn't she didn't deserve this you know mm-hmm. it, it would it would be that peter versus spider-man clash type of thing again yeah that did for sure because you know i think peter is kind of like with the same seat within all of us whereas though we didn't know that um, Tombstone had a daughter, so like he will all be in the same seat yeah, as him. You'd be shocked. Yes, yeah, so like oh damn, like what, what we want to do, <laughs> like what's going on, like what what do I do about this? Yeah. So like that story would be beautiful, beautifully told. I trust Asamiak to like do that if that's what they go for. So yeah, man, that's the end Bye. of the reaction, man. So uh, make sure y'all subscribe to News to News to Astonish channel. And, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification bell to get notified whenever I upload. And also subscribe to my boy, Jay Phrygian. I'll put everything in the description as well. His links to all his social medias and his channel as well. So with that being said, I'll see you on the next video, man. Peace. Thank y'all. Deuces.